having statements that are quantified, have quantifiers like for all and there exist, not only are each one of those tricky to understand in isolation, but also the order in which they appear in the sentence is material. It matters. Um, so this question is intended to get you to wrestle with that a little bit. Uh, in the example of comparing the students in our class, so the 18 of us that are enrolled in, in the class this semester, um, and the section of real analysis to which the students are associated. Um, the argument for the first one of these statements is that for all students, so any student we choose, um, we can find a section of real analysis that they're taking. We know that that's true because all of you are enrolled in real analysis this semester. Um, so that's the argument for the first statement. Um, team that said the second statement, what was your argument? I think helps to understand how these function is I like to turn them into logical implications, if-thens, hypothetical propositions. Those are things that you have more comfort working with, I think, uh, in your mathematical uh, history. So how I would do that is I would take the first statement. For all students in our class, there exists a section of real analysis, and just turn it into an element statement. If x is an element of our class, so x could be you, right? If x is an element of our class, then there exists a section of real analysis S such that X is an S. I think we can all agree with this, right? Each of you knows that there is a section of real analysis such that you belong to that section, right? So that's turning it into an if-then statement. If I do the same thing for the second, then the words just appear in a slightly different order. There exists a section of real analysis X such that if X is an element of our class, so if X is one of you, then X belongs to S. Does it help to write these in if-then format for you to see the difference? Or do you maybe want to revise your opinion of which one you chose based on unpacking the logical structure a little more? The fundamental difference between these two statements is that the green statement up here, the second statement, says first there exists a section. So it brings one section onto the table. And then it says everyone in our class is associated with that section. Right? Whereas in the first statement, it puts a student on the table first. And so it could put every one of our 18 different people in a list. And then says, for each of you, there is a section that you're enrolled in. Which is also true, but how many different sections are represented among the 18 of us? Right, we're all in the same boat. <laughs> we all meet here at 9 o'clock, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday every day, right? Um, so there's only, in fact, one section that all of you belong to. And so while it's true that each of you have a section, it's even more true, <laughs> in a sense, that there is a section, one section, a unique section, that all of you belong to. So to diagram out the difference, we might say in the first case, in the purple statement up here, that we have all 18 uh, of our names. I'm only going to write a few of them. Uh, let's see. Patrick. Uh, let's pick on Allison. Katie, whatever. So I'm just picking some names. Um, so we have all of the students on the table first. And then in the first statement, in principle, we can associate to each of you a different, potentially a different, section. You each get your own section in the purple formulation, right? Um, where you might, you know, you might share sections with other people. But in principle, each of you could have a different one. Where in the second statement, we have a single section, math 401 section 2. And that one section is associated with each of the students in the class. So that's the difference. Um, one of the ways I like to tease this apart is that when the there exists comes first, as it does in the green statement up here, I'll often just add an extra word to, to it to remind myself. When it says there exists a section, I'll go in here and add, there exists a unique section when it comes first. Right? Because that brings a single section onto the table and then says afterwards, everything, all of for alls, have to apply to that one section. Whereas in the first statement, when the there exists comes second, maybe I'll put a different clause in here. Maybe I'll put like their own. Right? So in the first statement, all students in our class have potentially their own section of real analysis. Right? Whereas in the second statement, there exists a unique one section of real analysis that you all have. So while in fact both of these statements are accurate reflections of reality for us, it's slightly more accurate for our situation to say that the second 
better reflects what actually is happening here, that there is a unique section of real analysis that all of you are enrolled in.